what we're going to be working on today is solving by factoring. So I want you to look at two different problems. The directions for this problem are factor. The problem is x squared plus 6x plus 8. And then this problem, the directions are solve. And the problem is x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. And what do you notice that's similar about these problems? Yeah, I know, the quadratic trinomials are exactly the same. What's different? You are right. There is an equal 0 on the second problem. So let's look at how that changes what we need to do for our problem. We are going to factor this guy. Uh, let's see, there's three terms, no greatest common factor, plus at the end means same signs. You probably already know it factors into x plus 4 times x plus 2. And in this case, that is the answer, right? We all like to know the answer. We're done. That's the answer to the problem. In this problem, that's not the answer. Uh, we're going to factor it. We have x plus 4 times x plus 2 equals 0. But we need to know, because they're asking us to solve, that means we're going to know what the value of x is. So we've got to figure out how to make this tell us what x is. And that's going to be using something that's called the zero product property. The zero product property makes some good common sense if you think about it. It basically says that if you have two things that are multiplied by each other and the answer or the result or the product is zero, then at least one of those two things had to be zero. I mean, you can't do like four times two and get zero, but you could do four times zero and get zero, or you could do zero times two and get zero. So when you have two things times each other, that equals zero, one or the other thing has to be zero. That's the zero product property. In a nutshell, when you multiply and the result is zero, then at least one of the factors uh, factors is a good term we'll talk about in a second, has to be equal to zero. Factors in math means something that's multiplied. So when I have a multiplication that equals zero, that means at least one of the things that are multiplied has to be equal to zero. And that's exactly what I have here. I have two things times each other, and the result is zero. So the zero product property is going to help me solve this. Two things times each other equals zero means that one of the two things, or the other of the two things, has to equal zero. So I get x plus 4 equals zero, or x plus 2 equals zero. Well, I can solve those equations, minus 4, minus 4. That gives me x equals negative 4, or minus 2, minus 2, x equals negative 2. And in this case, when I'm asked to solve that quadratic equation, this is the answer. So now we're going to have to pay attention to not only how to factor something, but whether we should factor it or whether we should keep on going and get an answer, so to speak. So let's kind of write out that steps to solve by factoring. And then we'll look at some examples. Steps for solving by factoring. And then we'll go through an example together. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we have to get the equation equal to zero. We also want to make sure there are no parentheses remaining. This is not usually a problem, but it's worth mentioning.
if there are any parentheses in the problem, you may need to FOIL or distribute. Also, you want the terms in standard form. Standard form means that it starts from the highest exponent and works its way down to the constant term. After we have step one out of the way, the next step we're going to do is to factor. We've had lots and lots of practice with factoring, so hopefully that will not be too challenging. And then after we factor, normally we factor and then quit, but since we're solving, we are going to go a step further and we are going to set each part, each part is called a factor, that contains a variable So each part that contains a variable, set it equal to zero and solve. And you remember what that is called when we have a product that equals zero and we set each part equal to zero? That is called using the zero product property. Okay, so let's look at an example And we'll work this example here once you can see it. Uh, let's start with 2x squared minus x equals 15. Step one says we have to get the equation equal to zero and make sure there's no parentheses. Also, we want that in standard form. Since this is not equal to zero yet, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 15 from both sides which is going to leave me 2x squared minus x minus 15 equals 0. I don't have any parentheses and this is in standard form because it goes from x squared to x to the constant term. So my next step is going to be to factor. To factor this quadratic trinomial, I'm looking to see if there's any greatest common factor, which there's not. And then um, I want to start with first times first is 2x squared. So I know my first spaces have to be 2x and x. Now the difference when I'm factoring here is I keep this equals to 0 as I go. And then my last times last is 15. So I could have 3 and 5 or 1 and 15. This sign at the end tells me my signs are going to be plus minus or minus plus and I'm looking for the difference of the outsides and insides to be negative x when it's all said and done because I need to get that middle term. So I try different combinations. Let's see if I put 15 and 1, I'll have 15x and 2x, which won't give me negative x. If I put 3 here and 5 here, I'll have 3x and 10x. That won't work. If I put 5 here and 3 here, I'll have 6x and x. That is going to work. So let's see, what did I say? 5x, put a 5 here and a 3 here, which gives me 5x for my inside terms and 6x for my outside terms. Since I need the difference between negative x, I better make the 6x the negative and the 5x the positive. So that'll be plus 5 here and minus 3 there. Okay. So now I have it factored. And then the last step is that I'm going to set each part, each factor that contains a variable, equal to 0 and solve those factors. So solve those two equations. So I take 2x plus 5 equals 0. And I take my other parenthesis x minus 3 equals 0. I'm going to solve those. So subtract 5 from both sides. Gives me 2x equals negative 5. And then divide both sides by 2. I get x equals negative 5 halves. 
Now, I like that answer just the way it is. It's a fraction. It's nice. I cannot simplify it any further. I'm just going to leave it. X equals negative 5 halves. Add 3 to both sides on this one. I get X equals 3. So the answer to this equation, the two solutions are X equals negative 5 halves and X equals 3. One way that you can double check is to take those values of x one at a time and substitute them into the original equation to check and make sure that you have the right solution. Now I want to give you a secret question that you need to work on to solve uh, for class discussion. Let me pick one here. Here's a secret question. The secret question is 3x squared plus 35x equals 12. So you are, your directions are to solve. And that is your secret question.